cavity waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Matt Blanchett, uh, Anderson Vision. Uh, first off, I just want to say, uh, Vincenzo, you're one of my favorite Canadian directors. Oh, I've loved so your work. Nice. I've loved your work since Splice. And um, I know it's been a few years, but I really, when I saw your name pop up in the credits for exactly one episode of Orphan Black, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so good. Oh, thank so, you. That's so kind so of you. I know. So, I, so, oh, well, so seeing you be involved with the uh, the peripheral, you know, gave me like made me feel like this is going to be obviously just as good, if not maybe not better. So, what uh, made you want to do the peripheral in the first place? What made you want to specifically direct the, the first two episodes? Well, it, it was William Gibson's book, um, and I for years had wanted to make his first novel into a movie, Neuromancer, but. That unfortunately never came to be, but I sort of see this as part of a continuum. And when the peripheral was written, uh, Mr. Gibson sent it to me and I immediately went, this is not going to be a movie. There's no way it's just too complex. It's too dense. But then thought, well, maybe it could be a TV series. And very fortunately for me, concurrent to that, I was doing my first episode of Westworld with Jonah and Lisa and I presented them with a book and glory be, uh, like 24 hours later, I get a phone call from Lisa saying we would like to do this. And so it was kind of a dream come true. But I'm like you, I'm a fan of Vincenzo. So it was going to be yes anyway. He could have handed me like an empty paper bag and I would have been like, yeah, we'll adapt this paper bag. Let's do it. But I, I <laughs> honestly, this would never have happened without Jonah and Lisa. They are the only two people, first of all, who I think could understand what to do with the book creatively. And then I also think people have such faith and trust in them that they could see how this very complex, not easily adapted piece of material would become something that would reach a large audience. And so it's, it's thanks to them. I mean, after Westworld and person of interest, I would have a lot of faith in them too. So um, personally, I've always wanted to see Snow Crash get adapted just to have, you know, Eskimo with poor impulse control on his forehead, you know, come yeah. on, that's too good not to do. But yeah, um, Lisa, what, um, what brought what made you and Jonah want to adapt this aside from you know knowing William Gibson uh well I adapt mean, this book you know sorry yeah no of course I mean we've both been a fan of William Gibson and Vincenzo's uh for a long time and for me I when I read the book it seemed not only to speak to this moment in time you know Gibson is such a amazing futurist but the future is kind of catching up with us very quickly right now, or we're catching up with the future. And a lot of the things that he describes in this book have actually begun to happen. So it's not science fiction so much as science fact at this point. Um, and so that was really timely, but, but more than that was the heart and soul of the peripheral is really about Flynn Fisher and her relationships, her friendships, um, her family, and her development as a young woman in this very uncertain time. And I think that's something, the idea of trying to figure out who you could be, what your place is in the world, how to make your life matter, uh, that these are all things that everybody grapples with. And so that was uh, what made it truly undeniable to me. And that's what I love about it, just from the first three episodes. So thank you so much for getting this made. Thank you, Vincenzo. Thank you, Lisa. I'm going to have to head out. Thank you. Thank Love you so much. Thank you.